Hello YouTube modelers, uh, all you glue sniffers alike, it's Darren. I am back. Been a while, but I am back with a new build series and it's a departure from my norm uh, being aircraft. That's uh, what, what I generally like to build. Now I have, uh, I'm still working on the RF5. It's uh, over here and it's doing well. And there's a there's a lot been done on it. Uh, found some stuff that I just didn't like, so I've gone back to fix that. But this is still going strong, uh, and there will be an update coming to that here before too long. But in the meantime, I need a little break. I need to do something a little bit different. So I have jumped off onto the old school monogram stock car in this instance we're going to be doing the recreation of bill i mean uh smoking dick trickles car and uh i'm looking forward to that this kit i actually found uh in a box my little tote here it was on my shelf of doom I had seen some water damage before i had uh decided to go ahead and pull it out and uh do something a little bit different. Take a break from aircraft. As a matter of fact, you can see on, uh, let me uh, turn on my overhead camera here, but the damage on the uh, decals is pretty bad. This thing saw some water. Uh, I did order a aftermarket set of decals for it. We'll see. I did test these on the paint mule. They worked fairly well. So I would like to, to use the, once again with the kit if I can, uh, if not I do have some aftermarket ones coming. So we're going to build this one pretty much out of the box, uh, time to get back in. I mean I haven't, I haven't swung, a, swung at a car model in a long, long time. And it, you know, airplanes is my passion. I've been working on F-18s for the last 22 years in the military, actually a little bit longer than that. but. Uh, I also have a soft spot in my heart for automobiles. Uh, here's a here's a picture of my hot rod. This is uh, my one to one, 75 Corvette, and I actually did a little uh, time uh, around the Winston Cup group. I mean, really, who's this guy? <laughs> that was back in the day, but I, you know, I like race cars as well, so. I think this is going to be a fun build. Now, in this episode, what we're going to go over today is uh, the chassis. Uh, uh, there's a lot of flash, a lot of sink marks, a lot of things that need to be done to the chassis to get it ready to go. Uh, as I said, this kit here was molded in 1988, so it's got a lot of issues. So we're going to look at uh, the ejector pin marks and some of the mold defects because there's quite a few. Uh, we're going to tackle the motor, uh, do some motor work on it, and get it ready to go, and uh, kind of go over a roll cage strategy. Not going to be following the instructions to a T on this one. So hang on and enjoy this episode, and I will put some pictures up of what's completed here at the end. Okay, so we will start with where I'm at now and where we are going to go. And the, the first thing I want to show is I've started with uh, the motor. And you can see here I've got the two uh, engine halves put together. Those are glued in. There is a pretty, uh, a pretty good seam line uh, through here that's going to, have to be cleaned up. And uh, across the top, this will be hidden and uh, some stuff up front here that we need to clean up just a little bit. Um, I can feel it's pretty rough. Of course, like I said, this is going to be hidden in the transmission tunnel, but uh, I'll probably clean up just the front part of that. The bottom, however, is a different story. Uh, that needs to be cleaned up considerably and gotten smooth because I'll be seen on the bottom of the car. So when it comes to the motor, one of the, uh, the things I have done is I've started to strip the chrome. Uh, I've cut it all off the sprue, but just to kind of give you an example I'm talking about, this this bright chrome um, is not indicative of 
the real car. So th th there's just not a bright shiny chrome on a Winston Cup car or a Monster Energy car. Depends on your, your age and what it is you're used to watch through. So I've gone through and I've started soaking most of my stuff in bleach and as you can see it's uh, starting to the chrome is starting to come off. So the air cleaner, uh, the oil pan, here's my uh, intake manifold, it's almost there, the spoiler, and these rims are really taking a long time, uh, or the, the wheels. They're, they're, they're getting there, but uh, just taking a little bit of time. Uh, if, <laughs> if you guys know a better way of stripping other than the bleach, I thought this was probably the uh, least um, caustic way of doing it. Uh, if you know a better way, let me know in the comments below because I'm always looking for a better mousetrap, right? So, anyhow, the chrome pieces, what I'm going to do is once I get these all stripped and cleaned, then I will go back and prime those and take in some uh, tricks out of the old aviation modeling uh, rule book. We will make some natural metal finishes and uh, do this up in the aluminums and the steels that it's supposed to be done in. Uh, that's the same as with the the motor itself, the bell housing, the transmission, etc, etc. We'll get that all into the right color. Also, I have started going on through the chassis. Uh, now, there's a lot going on here. There are a lot of uh, injector pin marks. Uh, you can see here on the nose, I'll hold this up, I've, I've started to take those out. Now, I've got one here for comparison. This is out of a uh, what's the year on this one? I believe it said 1983 as well. Yep, 1983. So it's cast the same year and almost identical. Uh, one's a Dale Earnhardt car, the black one. The other is the uh, Dick Trickle car. But uh, you can see up on the nose of this, let me see if I can get where the light will show you. Uh, well, that's not working real well. Let's see here. Can you see those in this? camera view maybe uh, there you go those are pretty big right there up on the nose of this thing uh, they've got them on the four corners here uh, they are all over the fuel tank back here in the rear corners they're also inside the rear tunnel so a lot of clean up there uh, thank goodness there is none in here so the uh, tub for the interior is pretty clean, it's just the bottom. So I have gone through on the gold one here, which is a little bit easier to see. You can uh, tell that they've been sanded off here. And I'll hit this with the coat of primer and check those as I would with any of my other kits. They feel smooth, so we'll see. Also, up here around the front part of the frame, a lot of indented sink marks. Uh, you can see them in here. Uh, here's the uh, black one again. I'll hold these up uh, on this side. You can see. Uh, again, let's go back to the side camera because I think it's probably a little bit easier to see. Uh, where I've got red, you can match that up to the other frame. They are, they were full. They're real, or not full, but deep. So I fill those in. You're absolutely going to be able to see this part of the frame. Uh, that'll be visible whenever the body's on. Uh, so it's a must that that's all cleaned up. Now, what have I used to fill that? You could use sprue glue. glue. You could use uh, Tamiya putty. You could use Vallejo putty. Whatever, really, because there's no scribing on that. It's all just going to be sanded and painted. Uh, my choice was the uh, 3M Super Red Putty. It is Bondo for all intentional purposes. Uh, it, it dries really, really hard and it sands very, very well. So uh, that is my choice and uh, that's what I used. There's also some areas inside uh, the fender in here. As you can see, I need to fill some gouges, which is really strange. And, Believe it or not, they're in the other mold too. So this has to be a casting problem. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop here. I want to I want to finish sanding uh, this frame, and then I'm going to shoot a coat of primer on it, and I will show y'all the difference. I'll do one side and then show you the difference in the two. So uh, I'll be back in a few. Okay, so I'm back and I got uh, pretty much I think the uh, frame taken care of. Uh, as you can see, I've got some spots that are uh, sanded down here. Those were areas that need a little extra attention after I uh, shot my primer on. Um, but they're smooth and I'm going to wait now to uh, touch those up because I know there's nothing major in here that needs to be hit. I want to wait until I get the roll cage all together before I uh, shoot another coat of primer. Uh, so I set this aside. Uh, I think this is a pretty good shape. I'm going to set that aside and concentrate now and move on to the motor. Now as you remember I stated that there's not much chrome on a Winston Cup motor of that error. Uh, here's a picture of the 22 Buick, I'm sorry the number 12 Buick of Bobby Allison. You can see the engine here there's uh, black valve covers not chrome and actually these these guards are the valve or uh, spark plug guards are probably a little inaccurate but I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, I've stripped it down about as far as I can so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and clean these parts up and then I'm going to shoot a coat of primer on those and get the motor itself uh, ready. Now I've filled in the gaps here that I think are going to be seen on the motor with my uh, Mr. Dissolve Putty. I'm sorry the cover or the uh, packaging or sticker is, is, screw, is screwed up there but uh, Mr. Dissolve Putty this is some really good stuff it's uh, very thick uh, a lot thicker than the um, Mr. Surfacer as you can see uh, really good putty dries hard, it's sandable, it's scribable, so it's good stuff. I've used that in here. Now one thing I've noticed, I'm going to bring this up, I want y'all to see that on this bell housing there's a texture and for some reason in this area here and on the top it was smooth. So what I'm going to have to do is once I've, I always got to sand it anyway, once I sand it I'm going to uh, break out my Mr. Surfacer 500 and a sponge and I'm going to try and build this uh, this bell housing texture back up just so it's uniform uh, but just something I wanted to point out uh, to you folks so next will be for me to uh, get these primer let me get all the parts uh, done and then I'll come back and I'll show you what this looks like and the, the big difference between the chrome in just the prime pieces uh, once I'm done so uh, I'll be back in just a few so before I go on I wanted to uh, show you see I've got the uh, the heads on the motor here and I've gone ahead and sanded uh, let me zoom in here this area here on the uh, this area on the back of the motor and on the bottom these areas down here so before I prime this, I want to go ahead and take some of my uh, Mr. Surfacer 500. I'm going to wake that up a little bit. And we're going to put just a small, uh, thin coat on these uh, bare areas here on the bell housing and the transmission. And then we're going to take some of this really close, close cell foam I've got here. And we're going to texture that. So, uh, and if that close cell stuff doesn't work. I've got a little bit uh, more open cell type foam there. We're going we're gonna to give them both the shot. But I wanted to do this before I prime because I want to give this a chance to dry and for there to for it to develop a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and get this opened up here and it's not going to take much so I'm just going to use the top. And I just want to put a thin coat on here. And this stuff's going to dry pretty quick. So we've got to be somewhat quick about it. But we're going to cover that area on the bell housing. 
uh, as I've got, let's see, a little bit more. So I kind of just start to get its own little texture going there. And I would take this foam and just touch it on here. That does a couple things for us, so it kind of blends in the texture with the rest of the bell housing. As a matter of fact, we'll go ahead and run this up a little bit further to blend it in. Good lord, that stuff is thick, man. Uh, we're going to put some up here and down here. And you can see it kind of just textures itself uh, already uh, and then we'll come in here and just touch it with the foam and it will texture it and we'll blend it in with the rest of the bell housing perfect so you'll see what that does for us in uh, once I get this primed, it'll all be primed in black, you'll see it, it'll just kind of blend all in. I'll do the same thing in these areas here. Now if this stuff starts to get too thick, you can put a little Mr. Uh, color Leveling Thinner in with it and thicken it up a little bit, but I don't think we need to do that. We're just going to get these edges right here. Uh, same thing, come in with the foam, touch it in there blend it in, get our texture, and you'll notice that our seam line's gone now too. So, this is uh, going to work really well, I think. I like it. So, we got our texture in there, and when I come back, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go off camera. I want to let this dry. Now I've got a picture here of the transmission so there's going to be some uh, uh, here you go you can see it from underneath the car there's going to be some natural metal finishes in there like an aluminum and some blues so uh, we're going to come back we're going to we're going to get this thing primed and get it and start to get painting on the motor and stuff I'm really looking forward to it so uh, stay tuned I'll be back uh, here very shortly okay I'm back and I have made uh, some pretty good progress on the motor uh, this is actually the next day um, but as you can see here I've got a bunch of my stuff here painted up in accordance with my re reference photos did some detailing on the uh, the transmission here um, Got some of my detail painting done here. Uh, that stippled area that took care of worked out really good. That's all, uh, no seam lines in there. That's worked out. That's gonna see the bottom of this is gonna be look really good underneath the car. Um, got the valve covers all finished. And I used a combination of different metallic colors with this. So I used some dull aluminum, aluminum back here on the bell housing. Uh, regular aluminum on the heads uh, I did the regular aluminum on the intake manifold flat aluminum on uh, I'm sorry this was dark aluminum back here flat aluminum on the uh, intake cover shields there and on the uh, air cleaner was a dull aluminum and this is actually ready to assemble. I'm, I'm starting to do a little bit of work on the headers. So these had a, a lot of flash in them and a lot of cleanup. And I'm really concerned that once I put these on, that this is not going to meet up real good here. So there might be some putty needed down here um, to kind of straighten this out some. We'll see. I might have to get the files out, some putty, and get all that cleaned up but we will certainly see once I get this together and I mock it up to see how much is going to be seen under the motor so 
So my next step is to go ahead and assemble this with some glue. It won't take very long. We'll get that done, let it set up, and then I'm going to mock up the front end of the car. I'll come back on camera, we'll mock up the front of the car, and uh, see what's going to be visible on the bottom. That'll help us to determine what to do with the bottom of this. So let me go ahead and do this assembly, and uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, there she is, uh, all glued together. We're going to go ahead and set this off on my trusty little toothpick here. And we're going to allow that to dry. I did use quick set, so uh, hopefully that'll dry fairly well. Now, we still have some stuff, the accessory driver to put on here, right? And the fan blade, and I uh, need to put on the breathers. But we'll do that here after a little bit. So I'll set this off to the side, let it dry, and then when I come back, we are going to discuss the roll cage stuff and the plan forward with that. So I shall be right back. I just wanted to take a real quick second to uh, mention Texas, San Marcos, Texas, and the IPMS Nationals this year. I am completely and totally stoked uh, that IPMS has decided to keep the venue going. Uh, I'm monitoring every day. I hope that they keep it because I plan on being there and uh, it, It's going to be a great time. It's actually my hometown. It's where I'm from So it's going to be a chance to see family friends and friends uh, from the past and uh, hopefully run into a few of y'all out there. So, you know, if y'all are uh, Willing to make the trip and uh, plan on attending the uh, the Nationals in San Marcos, please let me know in the comments below uh, I would love to uh, shake a shake a hand, have a conversation, maybe share a cup of coffee. Um, it's going to be a good time. Uh, hope to see you there. Now let's get back to this. Okay, so here we go. Roll cage, chassis, roll cage sides. So first thing I did, I want to point out is I took the connection point where the roll cage here attaches to the frame and this had an attached point here that set down into a groove there. Hold on and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay on this black Earnhardt car here you'll see what I'm talking about. Up in the front you'll see of the frame you'll see these indentions here and I'm not going to take these off the the sprue but if I put them side by side you will see in the front right here see this piece that actually sits down in the notch of this frame and what I did was is when I mocked this up on my car here when I mocked it up and set these in place those were not allowed to sit flush they sat proud so I mean they were up it pushed up about yay far I don't know if you can see that I'll zoom in on it but you can see it left them up about like that so I clipped them off and I filled the grooves here with um, sprue glue sanding them flat sand these flat and now being that it was sprue glue I used, once I put these in place, I can, I need to do a little bit more sanding, but I'll sand those down and those will sit in there nice and flush instead of sitting up proud with that bar under. It'll look a little bit better. So, one little issue with the uh, uh, roll cage. The other issue with the roll cage is actually right there. Here's a good, good shot. Ejector pin marks. 
Now, all these ejector pin marks I'm not too worried about. You're not going to see them. I am worried about them. anything on the inside. And you can look and see that there is a lot. There's down here on the bottom. There's a step. You can see it right there. Each one that's a mold line. And each one of these has a mold line on them. So they got to be sanded down. There's a mold line on this piece here. Um, the roll cage up here in the hood area, you can see the mold line going across it. Uh, there are mold lines everywhere. Here on the window net, injector tent pin marks need to come off. Now, of course, if you're going to cut this out and put a fabric one in, you don't have to worry about that. But here it is, and I'm not doing that on this kit. I'm trying to keep this one as stock as possible out of the box. Now I did take this side and I've done a lot of cleanup on it. And uh, I still got a little bit more to do. You can see down in here by the roll cage there's some stuff that still needs to be cleaned up at the floor. I can ask. But all in all, it's a lot better than it was. And it's just very time consuming. And that's just inherent with these older older kits. It's 1983 and um, burn is tight plastic's a little bit more brittle too so so that's that's done now what my strategy is here with the roll cages I'm going to go ahead and mock this in place both sides like so and get it in place and then I'm going to come in here with my back bar and I'm going to go ahead and put it in place and I want to get all this glued together and the reason I'm going to do that you can see here from the back is you see these areas oops see these areas right here here and over here this is where those connect right and you see the seam so I'm going to take those you're going to see those through the rear window and once I get that all cleaned up, then I can take this out as a piece. This is going to fall apart, but I can take it out as a piece. And then I can clean all this up. And then that allow me to clean it all up. It's going to help also with painting. So that's my strategy with this. So when I come back uh, next, uh, next episode, I hope to have the roll cage at least in this stage here and ready to be painted one other thing now I can't stress to you guys that this is comes from my aircraft building is reference pictures reference pictures reference pictures right I said that all say it all the time so here's a reference picture of this piece and this piece with the motor installed underneath the actual car. Now if you were to follow the directions given to you by monogram you would paint all this black and put it back in. Not the case. So what I've done is with my reference picture and my sharpies I've gone back and just kind of hit what needs to be red, what needs to be black and you can see uh, just kind of annotated it on there. This needs a lot of cleanup as well. A lot of cleanup. Look at uh, all around the steering knuckle here. You can see that now has to be cleaned up. Uh, there's mold lines on all the round pieces. I pulled a big old piece of flash off this earlier. Seam lines all in the brake area. Um, just a lot of cleanup to do. Time consuming. Look at this here. This area needs to be cleaned up. This area needs to be cleaned up. And I'm not going to bore you all with all that stuff. So when you see this again, I'll have all that cleaned up. And uh, probably primered and ready to go. The motor, it did in fact leave that seam at the bottom. I hate that seam. I remember it from a kid. Uh that's something you can see from a mile away so I will get some sprue goo in there or some uh, red bondo 
and get that formed in there and sand it down uh, and painted so at least it looks uh, looks a little bit better but really happy with the way the engine's turning out it needs a little bit more stuff like I said forward accessories um, and some detail wash on it uh, here again pretty much going to stay stock I don't think I'm going to run any spark plug wires I haven't decided yet but I don't think I'm going to we will see. So that brings us to the end of this episode. And uh, I do apologize. It would have ran a little bit long. More like 30 minutes. I'm going to try and keep these down to about 15. So I will do better in the future. Uh, that's it. Until next time, keep an eye out. I hopefully have some out here within the next week. And until then, enjoy these photos. Good night.